Chicken. Okay. Uh, what do we do with that? Hey, June, can you say that again? Say it again. It's really hard. Oh, God, Junpei! Oh, God, Junpei, why? <laughs> again, it's really hard. Th thanks. What? <laughs>
Oh yeah, uh, I guess I forgot to tell you. I found this a little while ago. Akane found it, actually. It's a map of the B-Deck. Let me see that. It's okay. See? Look. Yes, yes, hold your horses. What did you figure out? This is handy. See? We came in here. Now if we go out there, then we'll be on the other side of the grate. Okay, so... I wish they would let me, like, show a pointer or something to show. I may I may put something to show, like, you know, where here is and where there is. You guys can follow along a little better. Never mind, they put it for me. Never mind that. That's right. We can get out through there. There we go. Here, you can have it back. Good. It's my Thanks. map. Means the key card is somewhere in here, right? That seems the most likely. Okay. All right, we know what we need to do then. Let's get moving. First off, I say we split up and look for clues. <laughs> we are fucking Scooby-Doo in this. Okay. Yeah. Time to seek a way out, bitches. Okay. So, that's where we are. This isn't so bad. Ooh, plates. One, two, three, there's ten of them. Put them over. They look like hats. The middle is super deep for a plate. They're soup plates. They're made that way so that the soup doesn't spill. If we ever get out of here, you should treat yourself to a nice dinner out. It makes you think a poor college student has the money to do something like that. Oh, it's true. I think there were 15 of these plates. Assuming they're... I'm assuming they're for seafood. How the hell can you tell that? Oh, they look just like any other plate from the 99 cent store. Hey, if you ever take a lady out to dinner, you're going to embarrass yourself. Oh, I feel sorry for June. Oh, what? what uh, 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 why the hell are you bringing up June? The lady doth protest too much, methinks. You are not terribly subtle. <laughs> There's a bunch of little wavy ridges on this plate. Lotus, explain. Plates are for serving meat. Oh, you really are ignorant, aren't you? Come on, it's not like I need to know this crap. Jeez. Mm, what's this? A nine plates that look expensive. They're plates for appetizers. Remember, appetizers usually come on square plates. That is true, I never even thought of that whenever I go out to a restaurant. Okay, okay, well excuse me, princess. There's a voucher at the end of the counter. This voucher doesn't match the number of plates on the table. It says appetizers 9, meat 10, soup A, seafood dish F on the voucher. And the plates on the table are 9, 9 appetizer, 16 meat, 10 soup, 15 seafood. Maybe they're using hexadecimal here? And hexadecimal is the number system that goes 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F, 10, 11. Wait, I have never heard of this before. You're familiar with base 10, right? No, I'm not. That's the normal system of numbers. Oh, base 10 equivalents uh, for hexadecimal would go like this. Oh, oh, okay. So A is 10, B 11, okay. Okay, I, I hope I'm good. And 10 equals 60. Why is 10 equals 60? So 10 becomes 16 in base 10. I know this sounds strange, but you can think of it as just six letters added onto the number system after nine. Okay, this is not gonna go well for me if I have to remember this shit. I don't, I don't get it. Good, good job, Junpei. You get something. Okay. Um, uh, that might be important. Partition. There's nothing special about it. Countertop. Got a rolling pin and a colander. Nothing useful, in other words. That's the exit. Big iron plate over the door. I don't think we can open that. What about this one? Hey, Santa. Could you open that door, please? What the hell? There's no way I could open that thing. Guess you're getting to that age where your eyesight starts to go, huh? Ooh, what a douche nozzle. Do 
Better watch your mouth, boy. Or someone won't live long enough to see that door open. Don't kill him. We, like, right now, I'm just kind of like, let's not kill anyone, because we don't know who we're going to need to open that door. Like, door number nine, I mean. Gotta get out of here and fast. Okay. Ooh, this? Oh, wow. Oh, looks like it's made out of silver. I bet you keep from this pot would be really yummy. Well, actually, if it is made of silver, that would actually make you go insane because that causes, um, what is it? I can't, um, there is a disease that it causes. I don't remember it. Um, same thing that actually happened to the emperor, uh, the Roman emperor Nero. He drank from silver cups and lost his mind. Spending a day off with June, drinking tea. Could such a day ever happen for me? Dear God, yes. Dear God, let that day happen for him. Jumpy? Oh, did nothing. Don't really need hot water, so let's get moving. Oh, that was nice. A lot of notes. Got a bunch of stuff written on them, but it doesn't look like a code or anything like that. Okay. Um, oh, we can unlock this. Bowl. It's really rusty. If this ever open? Won't know until we try. Let's give it a shot. Alright, let's see if you're gonna come out. Damn, no dice. Damn it. Door is a bolt keeping it from opening. Shoot. Ooh, we can go in here. Ooh, what's in here? Ooh, cans and stuff. There's stuff in here, a whole lot of cans, probably a pantry. Okay, um, wood box in the second row. The, ooh, bro, no, okay, I want, I want to touch the wooden box. There we go. What's in the wooden box? That is a rusty knife! That may not be a, a good rusty thing. Rusty knife? Oh. I don't think we'll be able to use it while it's like this. It's futile. Futile? You know, a waste, useless, pointless. Futile. Your futile existence has no meaning. Oh, um, uh, any particular reason you wanted to bring that up? Oh, no reason, really. June, you're hot, you're smart, but you sometimes say the dumbest of things. I was just thinking about futility. Okay! This is going in an odd direction. Huh? Why were you thinking about futility? Yeah, that's what I want to know. Well, it has something to do with the Titanic. Titanic? The Titanic? Yep. Have you ever heard the story that the sinking of the Titanic was predicted? How do you know so much about the Titanic? I'm, I'm not upset. I just, I want to know. Why oh, haven't? No, I, I haven't. What is it? In 1892, 14 years before the Titanic sank, a novel was published. It was called Futility. Futility. It was written by an American novelist named Morgan Robertson. The story was about a big cruise ship colliding with an iceberg and sinking. Whoa. Of course, if that was the only similarity, there wouldn't be any reason to mention it. I mean, that, well, that's a big enough similarity right there. It wasn't, though. The name of the ship its nationality, course, departure time, size, displacement, maximum speed, number of passengers and crew, the number of lifeboats, even the location of the accident itself, and the cause, and the location of the damage. Wait, what? Everything matches the Titanic almost exactly. It was almost as if he'd seen the whole thing happen. Wait, 14 years prior. Holy crap. I mean, is that, is that true? Is that a real thing that happened? Um, because sometimes in these games, they kind of fudge with history a bit. Um, I'm going to be right back because I want to actually check this out. Okay, hold on, everybody. Okay, so this is what I found. Um, yeah, she was, uh, she's 100% right here. Okay, so in the, no it's called, it was a novella, a novella of futility written in 1891. Um, and the, all the similarities are pretty, pretty disturbing here. Um, in Futility, the boat is described as the largest ship, and it was called Titan. Uh, the size is practically the same, um, but the Titanic was 25 meters longer, but very close. Uh, both ships were described as unsinkable and hit an iceberg and went under in mid-April. Both were capable of speeds over 20 knots. Despite having thousands of passengers on board, both ships carried the bare legal minimum number of lifeboats. Holy crap. That's terrifying. Awesome, but I mean, like, I mean, to put this in the game, it's fantastic, but I mean, like, 
Holy crap, that's a piece of history. That's awesome. Okay, these guys did their homework. This is awesome. God, I love June even more. Keep going. This book was written 14 years before the Titanic sank. Hmm. But that's not all. It wasn't just futility that predicted the sinking of the Titanic. Wait, there was more? There were two other similar stories written by a man named William Thomas Stead. Huh. Both of them before the accident. One in 1886 and one in 1892. Stead wrote two stories that had striking similarities to the Titanic disaster. In one, two ships collided. Many of the passengers died because there weren't enough lifeboats. In the okay. other, a ship collided with an iceberg and sank. Okay, so the first one isn't very similar, but the second one is. Hmm, I don't know. I mean, I'll give you that it seems a little weird, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't too uncommon for ships to hit icebergs back in the day, or even other ships. Right, I knew you'd say that. What? Wait, what? Hmm? But, what if Stead had some sort of special powers? Special powers? To be more specific, what if he had the ability to do automatic writing? What's automatic writing? What? Uh, automatic writing? Wait, are you are you talking about when someone's possessed by a spirit and then they, they write a bunch of stuff without knowing what they're writing? Hmm. Yes. What do you mean, yes? That stuff's a load of bull. But Jumpy, you said you believe in curses. I did say that. I did say that. Come on, that's totally different. Not really. Okay, let's say, hypothetically, that automatic writing isn't a total load. These guys still couldn't have predicted the sinking of the Titanic. They kinda did. I mean, like, they didn't mean to, but they still kinda did. When this Stead dude wrote his thing, nobody had died on the Titanic yet. So if automatic writing is about being possessed by dead people, who the hell possessed him so he could write that stuff? That's a good point. That's not it. What's not it? Stead wasn't possessed by a spirit. He was doing the possessing. Oh. Hmm. What are you smoking? That is a good question. William Thomas Stead was a passenger on the Titanic. <gasps> oh my god, I get it. Okay. They may talk a little bit about it here, but um, in, in the last game in the series, in Zero Time Dilemma, they talk about certain people who have this ability to jump backward in time to like in their own in their own body like for example like let's say i got into a car wreck tomorrow and i was paralyzed it's possible in this game world that you can actually send your consciousness back to before it happened and you have all of the memories that you had at that time so yeah, if this William Thomas Stead guy, in at least in the in the idea of the game here, I don't know about in real life, but in the idea of the game is that if he was on the Titanic, saw the disaster, then went back in time and wrote a book about it, it's very, very possible. At least within the canon of this game. We'll find out more. Let's see. He just wrote down what he saw with his own eyes 20 years before it happened. Um, well, uh... <laughs> well, uh... Uh, why why don't we talk about this some other time, okay? Huh? But it's kind of important. Come on, let's get back to it. Rusty knife. We're, we're really in trouble. You know, I'm just repeating myself, but this really is a futility moment. The blade is so rusty. Yeah, I know. We can't cut a damn thing with a knife like this. If we want to cut anything, we'll probably have to sharpen the knife. Okay, so that's something we'll probably need to do is find a way to sharpen the knife. Cheese! Hey, there's something behind the cheese. You're right. I will move the cheese. All right, guys, time to move it. June and I need to look behind you. It's a bottle. It's a green bottle back there. What is it? Oil? Cooking oil. Probably use this to make something slippery. Oh, I know what we can use that for. We can loosen up um, the thing in the other room. Okay, let's see what's over here. There's milk in here. Milk in an iron barrel. Judging by the rusts, it's probably pretty old. Maybe we shouldn't open it up. I don't think it'd be pretty sight. I don't think so either. Anything over here? No, okay, that's the same thing. Okay, let's go back. So we can use this on you. Uh, bolts rusted in place, it won't budge. Of course, maybe put some oil on it. Hey, just a little bit of oil and... Come on, come on, you little son of a bitch! Whoa! 
<laughs> yeah, I got you, you little bastard. I, yeah, I did it. Uh, good job, Jumpy. I, uh, I am so smart. SMRT. Okay, oh, that's wrong. I didn't even touch that. Ooh, that's a freezer. Oh, it's cold in here. Yeah, I noticed. What is this place? Are you blind? It's a freezer. Oh, no way. That's way too cold for me. Maybe you should put more clothes on then. I'll freeze solid in seconds. Sorry, but I'm afraid I'll have to pass on this one. I'm going to leave the rest to you. Oh, whoa. It's really cold in here. Yeah. Hey, you don't need to be in here. You had a fever just a little bit ago. You should stay outside. We got this. No, I'm fine. My fever's gone now. But... Oh! <gasps> no! Why did it suddenly close? Ah! Oh... <gasps> did what's-her-name trap us in here? Did Lotus do this? The knob's frozen! But... why? It looks like the pipe next to it broke. Hey! Lotus! You're out there, right? Open the door! What do you want? What's going on? The door won't open! Try opening it from that side! Please! Oh, fine. If you say so, hold on. Why are you gonna make such a big deal out of it? It's no use. It won't budge. You've got more people in there. You figure it out. Okay. Not exactly what we needed right now. Oh. Uh, God damn it. Anyway, uh, let, let, let's find a way out. If we don't get moving, we're, we're going to be permanent residents. I don't like that plan at all. Two heads are better than none. Well, there's three of us, so we're doing good. I, I'm sure we'll, we'll figure something out. Yeah, you're right. Let's just take a good look around this room, okay? Right. Okay, so we have an escape the room inside and escape the room thing. Okay. Oh, damn it. Okay, hatch down here. Ooh, what did we find? Now uh, there's some stuff in here. So why don't we take some of it out? Okay. Ooh, water bottle. Is there water in it? I don't think so. And what's this? A uh, sturdy rope. Okay, it's a rope. Maybe we attach it to something else, I suppose. Okay, we can attach it to maybe the doorknob or something. Um, and try to tear the door open. That's my guess. Good. I can't hit it hard enough to break it. Maybe it just needs more of a shock, you know? More of a shock. I surrounded the door um Dang it. Okay, so I can't use any of these things. Try putting water into water. Why don't we try putting water into the water bottle we just found? Why would we do that? It'll turn into ice. What the hell are we gonna do with ice? We're gonna be ice in a few minutes. Okay, I get what he's gonna do with it. Okay, if we put water in it and freeze it, we'll, it'll be heavy and we can smash the ice off the doorknob. See, I am smart. What's in here? More stuff. Dry ice? Can you make stuff... Okay, can you make this stuff cause an explosion if you seal it in something that's airtight? Explode? Yeah. Did you do that in school? You god, Santa! No, I mean, like, you should never underestimate the power of expanding gas. Okay. Okay. Ooh, I have an idea. I have an idea. Nope. No, that's not gonna work. Damn it. Okay. Damn it. I thought maybe we could put it in there together. Dry ice is just frozen c carbon dioxide, right? Yeah, it, it is. I wonder how warm it has to get for it to, to turn back into gas again. Hell if I know. How is that gonna help us anyway? Oh, well, I figured we might be able to use it to get out of here. Carbon dioxide sublimation point is negative 109 degrees. Uh... June, how do you know so much about everything? I'm not upset. I just... She has a freaky amount of knowledge. Any warmer than that, and it'll turn into gas. Any lower, and it becomes a solid. Oh, how do you know that? Yeah. <laughs> Despite my looks, I'm the clean... <laughs> the queen of random knowledge. The clean... Ugh. I, I honestly don't know if that is a, um, like a flub from the actual game, or if, um, that was just like a thing they screwed up on and they put it in the game. 
Looks bad to mess up when you're showing off. <laughs> oh, you're so cold your mouth's going numb? Yes, that's right. Oh, no! You're just doing that on purpose, aren't you? Come on, guys. Don't you think that's kind of weird? I wonder why it doesn't turn into a liquid first. You want it out of the freezer. You want it out of the freezer now. Wait, you want it out of the... What do you, what do you mean, he want it out of the freezer now? I did see another arm. How the hell would I know? And how the hell is that going to help us get out of here? We don't have time for this crap. Uh, but it can turn into a liquid. Uh, carbon dioxide turns to liquid if you put it under high enough pressure. This isn't really a good time for a chat about science. Well, but I was wondering the same thing. Wondering what? Uh, wondering why carbon dioxide doesn't turn into a liquid unless it's under pressure. Right? It just seems weird. Water's a liquid between 32 degrees and 212 degrees. So why isn't that the case for carbon dioxide? Well, because it's not water? H2O and CO2 are pretty similar. No, they're not. They're totally different substances. Thank you! Look, guys, if we keep this up, we're just gonna freeze to death. You good with that? You wanna die talking about sublimation and gases? Cause I sure as hell don't. <laughs> God, I love you, Junpei. Now let's get back to work. Assuming you don't want to end up like a pair of ice sculptures. Oh, but Sean, there's a kind of ice that doesn't turn into liquid when it goes above 32 degrees. I heard about it. Its melting point is 96 degrees. Ice with a melting point of 96 degrees? You mean there's water that freezes at 96 degrees? Yeah, well, you could also look at it as ice that won't melt until it's 96 degrees. Okay, this is important. I don't know why, but they're highlighting it, so it's got to be important. Water that freezes at 96 degrees. Ice that won't melt until it's 96 degrees. So what's this ice with a melting point of 96 degrees called? <laughs> the guy who just said we need to hurry up is like all of a sudden like, okay, no, this is important. I heard it's called Ice 9. Ice 9? There's so many 9s in this game! Originally, Ice 9 was a made-up substance invented by a science fiction author. <sighs> But recently, scientists have discovered that such a substance actually exists. Wait, hold up. So is this thing called Ice-9, or is it water? Like I said, if the ice is over 96 degrees, it'll be liquid. If it's under that, it'll solidify. So you could think of it as a polymorph of H2O. Here, think of it like diamonds and graphite. That doesn't help me at all. They're both made of carbon, right? But yeah. depending on the structure of the crystallization, oh, the hardness and structure are completely different. Okay, what does that mean? So you're saying normal water and this ice nine are like that? Yep. Have you heard the story about the crystallization of glycerin? Uh, no. For 150 years after the discovery of glycerin, people cooled it, warmed it. They did all sorts of things to it, but whatever they did, it never crystallized. Huh. However, one day in 1920, some glycerin on its way to England by ship was discovered to have crystallized during the trip. Scientists around the world wanted to research this new crystallized form of glycerin and asked for seeds. Oh, a seed is a sample of the original crystallized substance. Huh. With a seed crystal, further crystallization of glycerin would be easy. However, something very strange happened. Not only did the glycerin encouraged by seed crystals begin to crystallize, even the samples nearby did, even though they were tightly sealed. And it didn't end there. After that day, it doesn't matter where in the world it is, all glycerin crystallizes naturally when cooled to less than 64 degrees. Wait, what? Before that day, no matter how glycerin was cooled, it refused to crystallize. But once the crystallization had begun, it was almost like... How do I put it? It was almost like all the glycerin in the world was communicating. Communicating in some way Whoa. that we can't sense. Okay, that's... It's one of those things where, like, that's entirely impossible, but at the same time, you're like, wait a second. What if it is possible? I mean, nuclear physics has things like this all the time in it. So, is it possible that glycerin have a hive mind? I don't know. We're getting off topic. Now it's happening everywhere. Yeah, I'm honestly wow, impressed. That's that's pretty interesting. But uh, what does that have to do with Ice Nine? What she's saying is that it's a lot like Ice Nine. What happened? I mean, a lot like? 
Oh, that would be bad. If water everywhere started freezing at 96 degrees, man, it'd be the end of the world. Oh, dude, imagine that. Imagine all water freezing at 96 degrees. Holy crap, that would be terrifying. At any rate, we're not gonna have to worry about the end of the world unless we can get out of here pretty damn quick. Yeah. All right, guys, I think that's enough of that. I didn't think we'd get quite this far off topic. I mean, I know I'm kind of at fault here, but we can't be screwed <laughs> I know I'm kind of at fault here? Yes, you are. S seriously, I might go by the name Santa right now, but I didn't grow up in Iceland. I freaking hate the cold. Yeah. So let's obvious. get cracking, all right? We gotta find a way out of here. Selfish, isn't he? Oh, yeah. Ice Nine is interesting and all, but we can discuss it more once we get out of this freezer. Unless it has something to do with whatever's in the freezer. Anything else in here I can use? Frozen chicken. Okay. Nothing to do with that. Hey, June, can you say that again? Say it again. It's really hard. Oh, God, Junpei! Oh, God, Junpei, why? <laughs> again, it's really hard. Th thanks. What? Whoa! <laughs> My God! <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> it's really hard. Say it again. It's really hard. Thank you. <laughs> Something wrong, Chimpei? Your face is bright red. Nothing! I am fine! If it's that hard, you can probably use it as a hammer. Yeah! Good point. Maybe we can use it to break something. Okay, good. Okay, so we can't use any of those. More than likely not. Anything over here we can use. There's frozen meat up here. Looks like pork. Huh? This looks like a tag or something. A chunk of pork. Jumpy is some paper in the meat. Nothing run on, but I can't read this. Gotta try and pull it out. We need to be frosted first, yeah, otherwise we'll just tear the paper. Okay, so we have hard objects now. Alright. Go, frozen chicken, go! Yeah. There's warm water coming out of that pipe. Warm water and dry ice. What, if, what would happen if we put that stuff in a sealed container together? Let's start off by putting some dry ice into the bottle. Dry ice too big. Okay, got it. Ah, okay, that's why it wouldn't work. Let's combine this with you. Yes! Alright, dry ice is in pieces now. Crumble. Okay, now we can. Damn it, stop doing that. I get it, I get it. Come on. Okay. Bottle with dry ice in it. Okay. Okay! Not yet, Junpei. I guess unless we can hook the bottle to the doorknob somehow. Right next to it. Okay. I need to figure out a way to attach it to... Okay. Obvious. Obvious. No. Sturdy rope. Here. There we go. Hey, why don't we use this rope to tie the bottle to the doorknob? Okay, we just have to put some water in. And then we have to give it a good whack or something. Kaboom! It'll explode and break the ice off the door. Okay, what are we waiting for? Put water into the bottle with dry ice and make sure the lid's closed. Now I just have to put this makeshift bomb on the doorknob. Okay. All right, that's set. So, uh, what do we do now? We just need to give it a little, uh, tap. The bottle's already about to pop. If we just throw a rock or something at it, it'll go off all on its own. A small rock? All right, this ought to do the trick. Ooh, that works. Ah, some dry ice, huh? Not a bad idea. I was thinking I might have to use that pork I found, but then again, I wouldn't be able to get the note out of it more than likely. All right, guys, stand back. Actually, we should probably hide somewhere. Where exactly do you expect us to hide, genius? There isn't really anywhere big enough. Uh -huh. Yeah, there is. Look, right here. We can hide in there. Yes. Come on, get inside. Okay, everybody. All right, here I go. Three... Four, five. 
You're counting the wrong way. Three, four, five. You're counting the wrong way. <laughs> that is a really sad excuse for a joke, man. Sorry, dude. All right, for real this time. You guys ready? Yes, whenever you're ready. Just throw the damn thing. All right, here I go. Three, two, one. Ooh, I think it worked. Jumpy, the ice on the door, is it gone? Yeah, it's gone. The blast must have shattered it. Yes, all right, let's see if it opens. Hooray, we're out. Oh, good. Move! Oh, oh god damn it! Oh, no, 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 no. Fuck! Well, you did just grab the grill. What did you think would happen? <laughs> hey, where's Lotus? Ooh, uh, welcome back. I was starting to get tired of waiting for you guys. Oh, fuck you, Lotus. You didn't even do anything to help us. What were you doing? What do you mean, what was I doing? I was waiting. We were gonna die! Oh, yeah? But you didn't. So everything worked out alright, didn't it? Oh, I don't like you. What the hell?! <laughs> Just kidding. It might not look like it, but I was really worried. I don't- but Because you need our numbers! Oh, don't give me that crap! Uh, I'm telling the truth. I mean, if you died, then I'd be in trouble too. If you died, then I'd be stuck here, and I'd die too. See? <sighs> I did all I could. I even looked around to see if there was anything I could use to pry open the door. But I couldn't find anything. So, all I could do was wait. I mean, what else did you want me to do? Call the cops? That would have been nice. Fine. But there's one thing I have to ask you. Oh, really? What's that? You didn't close the door, did you? Oh. What? You think I closed the door on you? Um, sir, I just what I thought. Why would I do something like that? It closed on its own. I told you before, if you die, then I die too. Yeah, I guess so. If she had really wanted to kill us, all she had to do was bar the door from the outside. But she didn't. Well, she didn't do anything. She's only lazy, or negligent at least. Not an attempted murder. I still don't like it. Well, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I doubted you. Hmm? Oh, yes, well that's alright. As long as you understand. Hey, no more screwing around, you two. Break time's over. Especially for you, lady. You've just been sitting on that fat ass of yours while we were freezing to death. Pretty much. How rude. I was plenty busy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How about you put all that energy into something besides bitching? Let's go. I don't like these two. I don't like either of them. I should have gone with seven. At least then I would have a way to open the number nine door. Okay. Okay, so here's the kitchen. There's the door we need to. What's this? Ooh, a code thingy. I don't have the right numbers. If we have the right numbers, it'll open the oven door. Okay, we don't have the oven. Anything else? All we've got here is a pot and frying pan. Oh, and a pressure cooker. Didn't they say something about pressure earlier while they were in there? I guess we could use it to weapons. Are you gonna run around holding that thing while you're looking for the dead? Hey man, it was just a joke. Why so serious? Why so serious? Pot and stove. If there are some ingredients around here, I could cook something up for us. Lotus, you can actually cook? What the hell do you think I am? A lazy woman who is gonna let everyone die? You better believe I know how to boil water and put in instant noodles! <laughs> so beyond that, you're not very useful. And, and I can boil eggs, too. My god, you can do the simplest of things. I'm not impressed. How do you survive? Okay, ooh, there's the grill. Okay, so we got out. Ooh, there's water in it. The sink, still got water in it. There's a couple of plates in there. I don't think they're gonna help us much. Me neither. Ooh, whetstone. Okay. Oh shit, don't tell me you're gonna try and smash open the card reader. Are you an idiot? If you do that, we'll never get out of here. Oh, well, yeah, I guess that would be bad, huh? <laughs> this Westland's only gonna be useful if we need to sharpen something. Which, guess what? Maybe we'll use the Westland to sharpen the knife! Okay, blade's getting sharper by the second. We should be able to cut something pretty good with this. Yeah! I guess. 
I guess I'm going to sharpen the knife. Who are you going to stab with that? <laughs> you, you don't shut up, asshole. And then you can probably cut something soft with it. Ooh, okay, I know what I need to do. Okay, I'm, I'm still kind of checking around. Countertop, rolling pin and colander, nothing useful. Anything over here. Uh, uh, this table for preparing food. There are plates everywhere. Okay, so I know what I need to do. Okay, go. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna put the meat on the grill. Then I can cut it up and I can get whatever that paper is. Hey, what are you doing? I'm gonna do if the paper burns. Come on, it'll be fine. I mean, it's not like it's gonna burn right away, right? So just gotta keep an eye on it. It'll be the paper will be fine. You know, they can argue all they want. I'm gonna keep an eye on this fork. Because if it's about time. Jumpy, be careful. Sweet of her to care, but I know what I'm. Ow! See? I told you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You done fucked up, Jumpy. Hey, what the hell are you doing? Hurry up and take the paper. It's not coming out. This thing's frozen stiff. I can't get it out. So what are we gonna... So are we going to have to cut up the meat? I knew it! I knew it was gonna have to cut up that meat. Yeah, it looks that way. Looks like cut the meat. I thought you had something to cut the meat, didn't you? I do. I got the knife. Alright then. Sharpen the knife. Cut the pork. Now we can cut the paper. Wait, wait, hold on. C10F. C10F. Um, I remember that thing. What? A was 11. B was 12. C is 13. 13, 10. No, 10, 10 was 16. So 13, 16, and then 8. 16. We know F was something different then. Okay. Okay. Um, where is the thing? Okay, there is the thing. Hexadecimal. Kind of hint. Yeah, maybe. Oh, I told you about hexadecimal. Of course, you do. Here's a little quiz for you. What would 9 plus F? God, I was trying to figure out what F was. F is 15. Okay, F is 15. That's right. Good job. You're a fast learner. Okay, so F is 15. Okay, so we've got 13, I think. Yeah, 13, 16, 15. 13, 16, 15. 13, 16, 15. Let's see if that's what this is. I think that might be what this is. Okay. Yeah, okay. I think E is for enter, C clear. Okay. It's going to submit an answer. Okay. Do if I can press C, right? Okay. Let's give it a shot. Okay. 13, 16. Wait. I can, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Wait, wait. Oh. I need to look at the paper. Hold on. I was in random numbers. No, I'm not. Okay. Shut up. Shut up. Just shut up. I got this. Okay. 13 plus 16 plus, um, wait, is there anything on the back? Just double check that. No. Okay. So 13 plus 16 plus 15. Oh. Math, not good. 13 plus 16 plus 15. 44. Oh. Okay. Let's give it a try. Unless we need four numbers. Case for screw. Okay. Nope, that is not right. Okay. I feel like I don't have all of the code yet. Anything CNS stands for? I know what they stand for. Corporate finance? No. Uh, I thought it was clever and funny. <laughs> God damn it, Jumpy, I love you. Okay, let's try this one more time. Okay. okay let's try this again. Three, three. Oh god, I got it! Okay, good! Yes! Alright! Because of metal falling, guess it went well. Oh yeah, door open. Good job, Jumpy. Yeah, good job. I think that's the key card. I got the key card! A Saturn key card! 
Let's say lowercase h, the line through it. Yep, it's the Saturn symbol. Remember, there was an elevator next to the main staircase. That are marked like this on the key card. Okay, yeah, I remember that. I guess that means this card ain't gonna help us get out of this room then. I'm not sure. Why don't we try it out? Let's try it anyway. Hey, what's this over here? So it came through, it's not long. Okay, it's almost like an iron gate in a dead hallway. Yep, okay. Dead end hallway. Okay, might as well be locked. All oh, good going back there, too. Okay. Well, oh, damn it. No, over here. Okay. Let's give it a try. Oh, yeah. I think it's unlocked now. Ah, yeah. yeah I did it. Let's get out of here. Yes, let's go. So, after nearly dying and talking about how if all water freezes, we're screwed. Um, hooray. We, we did a good. You found it! I think... We've been here before. Oh, I... I think we're back to where we began on, like, a deck. Okay. But, we are, um... We are all out of time on, on this one. So we're, let's go, we're gonna save here. Okay, so. We're all finished up. We're all saved up. Yeah. So, I think we're back at a deck. I think that's exactly where we are. But, we're gonna have to save that for another episode because we are at time for this one. Like I said, I don't want to spend, uh, like, I don't want these to be, like, hour-long episodes. I'm trying to go for, like, like between, like, 30 and 45 minutes. I went over in the last two episodes because I was still kind of getting used to the system. But now I'm ready. Now we're doing good. We are kicking it. We are doing it. And we are having some fun. Oh, my God. I love this game. Oh, this is so fantastic. Anyway. Thank you, everybody, so much for watching. I'm glad that you're here with me enjoying this adventure. I hope that you guys are having fun because I am having fun just solving these locked room puzzles. They're so interesting to me. And, like, I try to figure stuff out loud as much as I can because I am uh, I'm kind of an internal thinker when I'm solving puzzles. So I'm trying to, like, think out loud and say things so that everything gets figured out. But either way, we have discovered that um, the Titanic was predicted to, you know sink by several people um one of which may have been on the titanic and sent his consciousness back into the past to try to warn people but of course no one would listen so he wrote a book instead trying to change things but that didn't do anything secondly we have learned that glycerin is a hive mind which is interesting and let's hope that water is also not a hive mind because then if that were the case um everyone would die anyway guys Thank you, everyone, so much for being here with me, and I am looking forward to doing a lot more in the future. Alrighty, let's continue to unravel the mystery in the next one, my beautiful, beautiful viewers!